Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Move that little piece of granite out of the screen. Um, today, I'm pretty excited. We've got a really, really cool uh, knife review. Uh, it's gonna be, a, gonna be a crazy one. We're taking a look at the Artisan Cutlery Ahab. Uh, this is a collaboration with Niche Designs. Um, so, yeah. What do I think about it? We'll get into that in a little bit. First of all, let's start off with, uh, do, 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 where did I put the ruler? There it is. All right, let's take a blade length measurement. We're coming in just a little bit over three and a half inches. Uh, so big, big blade. It's also fairly tall, um, but the knife itself is not, well, it, it doesn't feel very large. Maybe is the best way to put that. Let's go ahead and break out the rats. Line them up, pivot to pivot. Whoa, where's the pivot? We'll get into that in a little bit. I say as if you guys haven't seen any other reviews of this knife, <laughs> which I know you have. Uh, it's been out for a while, and this review probably not going to come out for a long, long time. There's our Savibis. Good deal. And let's bring it out. There's a PM2. And there's a Benchmade Bug Out. Alrighty. So, definitely not a small knife in terms of length, but. Wait, it's not that much thinner than the PM2. I mean, it's it's thinner, but I thought it was a lot thinner. Interesting. Okay then, <laughs> it's a, it feels very thin, very lightweight. Uh, what are we looking at in terms of materials? Blade AR RPM nine. Uh, in this case, we have these wood scales. There's a couple of different versions: titanium clip and backspacer. So, yeah, some pretty. Cool stuff, look at those thumb studs. Anyways, before we go too much further, I wanna thank Mike over at Sharpen Blade for loaning this in. Really appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, let's go to the cutting. Guys, I just wanna take a minute to appreciate this view. Isn't that gorgeous? It, you know, cameras never really pick up views like this in all their splendor. You really have to be here to appreciate it. And yet I'm a little disappointed because, you know, I, I like, I like doing the review cutting stuff in, you know, really beautiful places for you guys, give you guys a little bit of change of scenery and stuff, but for today's knife, the Artisan Cutlery Ahab, I wish I had access to like a, an oceanside view. Maybe I should've just driven to the coast to, to, to film the review cutting, just film the review cutting of this knife because it's the Ahab. It's the Artisan Cutlery Ahab. It, it's named after a crazy captain of a whaling vessel who had this weird vendetta against a whale. I mean, yeah, the whale ate his leg, but you know, it's just a whale, man. And look, it looks like a fish. It's got this harpoon shape, like, you know, harpoons like they had on whaling vessels. Large she blows, and you harpoon the whale, and you haul her on board, and you take the blubber off to make <laughs> lanterns and stuff. Honestly, if I really wanted, if I was really committed to this, I would have driven to the East Coast, Flown to the East Coast, well, probably driven just because, you know, flying with knives is a little bit iffy. Go to the East Coast, film the review cutting on an old, I don't know, an old shipyard in, I don't know, Boston or, or something. Get some of the old, I don't know, somewhere that's got the old ships. Unfortunately, I'm a college kid in New Mexico, and there's no ocean around, so let's just talk about the knife. So, the Artisan Cutlery Ahab, 
Uh, this was a knife that I was really, really excited about when it was first announced. And this knife was loaned in by Mike over at Sharpened Blade. Um, we did a video together, actually, where we reacted to some of the Artisan and CGRB stuff. And um, we were both very excited about this knife. So he bought one. He sent it to me to review. Thank you, Mike. What do I think? Well, that's for the rest of the review today. Right now, we're just going to talk about uh, some things. So let's talk about the action first. Running on bearing, thumb studs, very good action. Uh, very unique thumb studs. Uh, you'll get to see those in better detail at the table, but uh, yeah, really good action. Um, no complaints with the action, really. Um, so yeah, good deal. How are the ergonomics? They're, they're phenomenal. For such a thin knife, I mean, these ergonomics, it is so comfortable, this Poon spoon up here, perfect for your thumb. The ergos are just so nice. You can't feel the clip at all since it's a milled titanium clip. And everything's just so soft and rounded over. It's it's a dream in the hand. It's very, very comfortable. How does it carry? There you go. Get off me, fly. I've been bitten up by bugs today. Like, there's just bugs everywhere. They're just eating me. Uh, it's a little bit of a wide knife, but I don't think it hurts you in the pocket. It's pretty lightweight, very thin uh, in this dimension, you know, broad in this dimension, but thin in this dimension. Clip works fine as a milled titanium clip. Uh, you know, the smooth wood scales help with that. It is a little bit grabby, but I think it's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, carry is good. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do some cutting, shall we? So, let's go ahead and grab some cardboard. <laughs> oh, it is so slicey. Thin, full flat grind. It is just, oh, it is a dream come true. Man, it's just so slicey. ARR PM9 blade steel. Love that. It's just... It is so dang slicey, guys. Very, very good. If, if you want a knife that will slice and slice and slice for days, artisan cutlery Ahab, 100%. All right, let's go ahead and do our rope pull. Not sure how, how it'll do here. Let's, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, a little bit of a struggle, but I think that's just because it's so thin and the blade shape. I do not think it'll do good here. Okay. Yeah. Warncliffe, Sheep's Foot, whatever you call this blade shape uh, stuff, they don't really do too good on the push down, especially with thin geometry, but no, that's what it is. Go ahead and actually, you know what? We're almost done with Old Blue. You know what? A little bit of hang up there. Um, let's try to make a little bit of a, let's see how thin we can go. <laughs> yeah, a little bit wavy trying to go that thin, but you know what? Did good, felt good going through. I think the grind is done very, very well. Let's get back to the table. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get into what I'm liking and not liking about this knife. And the first thing we gotta start with is the blade because holy crap, this blade <laughs> it is excellent. It is excellent. Super thin. Let's bring out that PM2 to compare blade stock. Nice thin blade stock. Full flat grind, comes down to a nice thin edge. It cuts like no one's business. Uh, this blade shape, uh, kind of a modified uh, worn cliff, get a nice pokey tip. It's not completely straight though, which is why it's a modified worn cliff. Uh, and because it's not completely straight, you can get some longer slices. Uh, that's fantastic. I think that is, that's great. 
It's a very interesting looking knife, but I mean, this blade just works so well. And we can't even talk about how well the blade works until we talk about the handle. So let's go ahead and talk about the handle too. We'll talk about these things kind of in tandem. So comfortable, so comfortable. You know, usually thin knives aren't that comfortable. This one just breaks all the rules. This knife is so dang comfortable. The ergonomic lines are very neutral, but you know, it's like it, it's, it, it swells in all the right places. It's slightly contoured. It just feels great. And the blade, you have this harpoon. You can get your finger in there for those cuts. You get your thumb in there for these cuts. You can, it, it's just, the, the clip doesn't bother you in the hand at all since it's, you know, um, kind of wide. I said this before, and I will always say this, if you make your clip wide, this is one of the main benefits of a milled clip is, is they disappear in the hand better because, you know, the wider the clip is, the more surface area, the easier it is to make that clip just disappear in your hand. And this clip does, like, I, I, I couldn't even know. Like, if you told me this knife didn't have a clip on it and I was holding it with my eyes closed, I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, there's no clip. Fantastic ergonomics and a fantastic blade. And you add those things together and what you get is a fan fantastic user knife. Let's about that full flat grind. Look, a lot of people love, you know, the, the super thin, deep hollow grinds. And those are really, really cool. But this, a full flat grind like this on a tall, broad blade, gosh, this is where your cutting performance is at. Like this is a super slicer. Um, do I have my calipers sitting around here somewhere? I should. Uh, we're gonna take a behind the edge uh, reading. I'm gonna guess it's about 20 thousandths. Um, <laughs> where are my calipers? Hmm, where are my calipers? Okay, I'll be right back. Ah, I found them there right in front of my face, buried under lots of knives, cause I'm an idiot. <laughs> But, all right, let's get these bad boys turned on. Ah, it, it's easier to do this off screen. Yep, 20 thousandths right there. About 21 thousandths there. About 19 there, and then there at the very back, it's gonna be a little bit thicker because we're gonna do that in a little bit. But yeah, so not the thinnest behind the edge readings ever, but honestly, 20 thousandths is thin enough. And again, the geometry is done. <sighs> the geometry is done well enough that this knife slices like an absolute champ. Thin blade stock, that full flat grind. I mean, when you are passing through a material like cardboard, it's something that you can sometimes notice with a hollow grind. If it's a super deep hollow grind, you know, you have your flat and then your grind. Sometimes certain materials get caught in that transition from the grind to the flats. Here, you know, since it's all just a flat grind, there is no speed bumps, so to say. And this just blazes right through. So, fantastic. Uh, this knife carries very, very well. I mean, you're getting a lot of blade. Um, but it's a very slim package, it's pretty lightweight. The internal milling on this is insane. I have a disassembly video that you can go and watch. Uh, someone commented and say, saying that they didn't like my disassembly video because I talked about when I was a little kid. I'm sorry, bud. Um, uh, next thing, I like the name, the Ahab, you know, with this harpoon blade shape. It just makes sense, right? You know, from Moby Dick. Um, so yeah, that's 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 cool. The pocket clip works great in and out of the pocket as well as in the hand So that's nice. I like the titanium backspacer titanium clip. You know those accents are all really nice Love these thumb studs very unique thumb studs. They give the knife some Character and uh, yeah, they're just They're they're very comfortable to use they work well and yeah the action on this knife is very good The centering is way off um I'll get to that later. Inset liners, that helps keep it so thin. Access to the lock bar is really, really good. And that they've rounded it, very nice. You have a little bit of jimping under here, which I like the idea behind it. I don't think I can really feel the jimping. Like I don't think there's like meaningful traction. Well, maybe a little bit. 
but I like the idea. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into what I don't like about this knife. And to do that, we're gonna have to do a little bit of maintenance on it. So let me get my tool set together. All right, I'm just gonna come out and say it. Um, maintenance on this knife is a little bit of a difficult task. <laughs> I was gonna say something much stronger, but decided that I would uh, filter myself. Um, let, let's talk about something real quick. Hear that rattle? That's the lanyard post. Which, yay, I like that they use a lanyard post in the back spacer instead of a lanyard hole, but um, the fitment's just not very good in there. And so that pin just wiggles around all the time. Uh, we got our T6 on here. So, there's no pivot visible. And that's kind of cool. Uh, keeps the, the lines of the knife looking sleek. But this knife comes off center so easily. Um, and this happens, you know, knives come off center. If you use them, if you fidget with them, they come off center. It's just kind of the way it is. But this knife comes off center after like two or three flicks. And I have locked tied this pivot several times. And this wouldn't be super annoying if I could get to the pivot without having to take a scale off, right? Because I could just adjust it and go on with my day. Um, the inside of this knife looks pretty cool. You have like this fish uh, pattern. Or, I mean, everyone's calling it a fish pattern. This is named the Ahab, and Ahab was a human who had a vendetta against a whale. So, you know, like fishes don't really come into the equation at all. And yes, I said fishes because I'm talking about multiple groups of fish. So, because uh, multiples of the same type of fish are just fish, but uh, multiple groups of different fish is fishes. So T8 here, let's tighten that up. We're back to center. Uh, not a big fan of the hardware on these. Um, let's see how the action is. Mm, not exactly where I want it. Okay, you're still centered. No play. Much better. The detent on this knife is dialed perfectly. Um, do I want to take that screw out and relock tight it? Maybe, probably better. Right. Better safe than sorry. Get over here, screw. Hopefully the rest of the knife doesn't just collapse. Yeah. See, as soon as you take the pivot out, everything like kind of springs apart. And since I didn't take this scale off, um, yeah, it's not it's not a big deal. But uh, watch my disassembly video. Disassembling and maintaining this knife is not as uh, intuitive as you might expect. Okay, I'm putting a crap ton of Loctite on here. I know this is way too much Loctite, but uh, it's blue Loctite, so we should be all right. And, I mean, <laughs> I'm sending this knife off to Mike, you know, this knife going on a trip to Canada, but, you know, I want Mike to have a nice knife. <laughs> so, and I mean, I'm going to send this to Corey at Stafford's EDC to send to Sharpen Blade, which is ironic because Corey already had this knife and he reviewed it, this exact same knife. So I'm going to send it back to him so he can take it apart and send it to Sharpen Blade in Canada because the Canadian dictators don't want Mike to have a really cool knife. RIP Canadians. Okay. Perfectly centered. Now we've got like a little bit of lock stick. Okay, well we're gonna try and flick it as little as possible now to let that lock tight just kind of set. But um, bottom line is maintaining this knife is not super 
intuitive. It's got extra steps. And yes, you know, the whole hidden pivot, all that stuff. It looks good, but at the end of the day, I'm just not a fan of extra steps. Plus, you have to take this side off first so that you can... Actually, okay, so it's really, really weird. So you gotta take this side off first so you can get to the screw that holds in the pocket clip from the inside so you can take off that screw that's under the pocket clip if you wanna take this knife completely apart. Again, check out my disassembly video. Bottom line, not my favorite knife to disassemble. So, yeah, that rattle, Ugh, I don't like that. So really my biggest complaints of this knife are just that little bit of rattle and the overall ease of life uh, when it comes to maintenance. Um, so I guess we can go on to my final conclusions. Seems a little bit, seems a little bit fast, but you know, I, I don't really have anything else to say, so let's do it. These, they, these come in about, oh, <laughs> gosh, edit that out, that never happened. <clears throat> these come in about 70 bucks. Um, yeah, it's worth it. AR RPM9 blade that I, I love AR RPM9, and this has held up really, really well. Um, I'm probably gonna strop this up a little bit before I send it back to Mike, but I, I thought I'd have to do a full on resharpening with how much I was just using it and liking it. And yeah, it's definitely not super sharp anymore. I will strop it up when I send it to Mike, um, but uh. I love AR RPM9, it holds up so well. This is probably the sliciest knife I've reviewed all year and one of the most comfortable. Like everything about the design of this knife is just thought out so well. Um, I think Niche Designs himself, follow him on Instagram by the way, um, I think he said that he was aiming at just making a cardboard destroying monster and he absolutely did. This, this is a purpose built tool. And what's its purpose? to slice like a lightsaber. And uh, yeah, yeah, it does that, 100%. The ergonomics are just so well thought out. The blade is so slicey. This knife gets a recommendation from me, 100%. Um, it is absolutely fantastic. You know, for this video, I was going to uh, have a little sperm whale model out here. Um, I haven't done like the matching my set to the specific knife reviews in a while just because I've been too busy to really care about that. So I've just like had the same set, but I wanted to have like a, a sperm whale model. And I was like, you know what? Actually, you know, to fit kind of the, the prehistoric theme of the channel, I was going to get a, a model of uh, Livia Tin Melvilli, which is an extinct genus of sperm whale from the Miocene. And it's huge. I'll, I'll throw up some images on the screen, but you should really Google this thing for yourself to get just an idea about how huge and terrifying this thing is. And I, I, I love it. It's an absolute beast. Obviously, the genus name, Liviatin, is inspired by, you know, the Leviathan, um, which I... Well, I, maybe maybe Moby Dick wasn't really based on the Leviathan, but uh, the species name, Melville, is named after the author of Moby Dick, um, Herman Melville. Uh, so it would have been very fitting to, to have that on display here, um, but I didn't. I also didn't make as many dick jokes during this review as I, I thought I would. In fact, I don't think I made any. What a What a shame. What a shame. Ah, well. Um, but, yeah. This knife definitely gets a recommendation from me. It's absolutely fantastic. Very, very cool. The look's going to be polarizing. Um, I think it looks interesting. I wouldn't say it looks beautiful or anything, but I also don't think it's ugly and hideous like some people have said. I just, I, I think it's a very... Honestly, I, actually, I'll be honest. I don't give a damn how it looks because it cuts so freaking well, so... <laughs> There we go. Um, okay, gonna let that Loctite set. Anyways, that's gonna be it for the review, guys. Yeah, you probably already knew that this was, was gonna be a winner, and it definitely is. So, I've been Gideon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.